Well, hello there, friends. Amazing recipe today. Stuffed pork chop with fadina cheese and prosciutto. Amazing and a mushroom sauce. I'm gonna show you how to make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. Stay tuned, friends. We're doing it right now together. Well, hello there, friends. Let's get going with those pork chops. First thing we're gonna do, friends, we are gonna brine them. We're gonna brine them. You don't have to brine them if you don't have the time, but the brining is gonna make them uh, more moist, it's gonna introduce moisture, and it's gonna tenderize somewhat. So, you know, have you ever had a dry pork chop? <laughs> Everybody's had it, right? You brine them, I'm telling you, you'll never not brine again. Try, try it one time, no big deal. It just takes a couple of hours, two, three hours. It's water sugar and salt and you can put a little flavor in there a garlic it's not going to do much uh but you know what i do sometimes i just take a garlic cloves i lost one on the floor this one is not going to participate and uh you just smack them and you take your garlic right there and you put it here it's right not going to do much don't worry about it all right so we're going to put a little bit of soy sauce that's going to give us salt more salt there's just a little bit of soy sauce. It's going to give us a little flavor, not much flavor. Uh, just salt mostly. And, uh, and then we're going to put some water. I use cold water. Mix everything up like this. And then we're going to coat them. We're going to coat the... Um, make sure your, uh, your salt and your sugar is dissolved. And uh, you're just going to pour that in there. You know, pork loin, pork tenderloin, pork chops. I'm telling you. And you see, I'm not really measuring everything. It's about two or three tablespoons of sugar, two or three tablespoons of, um, of, uh, of salt, a little bit of soy sauce, and, uh, and a wa whatever amount of water we're going to need right now, probably a little bit more, just to cover those chops. That's, uh, that's all we need to do, friends. You see, look. I mean, this is, a, this is no big deal at all, right? Just a little more water, maybe. And we're going to let that uh, marinate it. Not marinated. We're gonna let it brine them. Three hours, four hours max. That's it. So you do, my friends. And uh, and I promise you, uh, maybe what you want to do if they're not completely coated like this, if they're not completely covered. Well, you know what? We, we can add just a little bit. Holy mamma mia! We can add just a little bit more water, and uh, and we'll mix it up really good. And two or three hours. And then what we're gonna do? We're gonna cut them and we're gonna stuff them. So we'll be back in about three hours when they're nicely brined. We'll be back. Okay, friends. Well, the, um, the, uh, uh, the pork chops are brined for about three hours. Three, four hours, that's all you need right here. We're gonna take them, we're gonna dry them, and we're gonna stuff them. Now, you don't have to stuff them. This is just today's recipe, friends. If you wanted a, a more simple recipe, we, oh, mama mia, we did a, a um, a pork chop uh, recipe, and the brine, they just throw it away, and don't save it for nothing, okay? This can't do nothing. Don't be out there and saving the brine, do something with it. Eh? Just with salted water. Uh, yeah, I have a, um, we did a recipe not too long ago. It's right over there. We did a recipe not too long ago, um, where it's uh, uh, just brined and sauteed real quick. We didn't stuff it or anything. But I figure I like to do this so I am going to, uh, to stuff and show you. Uh, I just make a little pocket in there and put a little prosciutto and a um, little prosciutto and, uh, and cheese. I got some Fontina cheese. You can do all kinds of different cheese in there, brie cheese, whatever, you know. So I, um, I, got, I keep everything in the fridge because it's got to be nice and cold, friends. Whatever you're doing, it's got to be nice and cold. Eh? Uh, you can't have the... Uh, so what I do is I make a little package that I'm going to put in there like this. See, friends? I make a little package, and I'll show you. We're going to do it together. So a piece of cheese, it could be whatever cheese you want. And, um, you know, a Fontina cheese, it could be a Brie cheese, it could be a mozzarella cheese, or whatever cheese you want, really. And then what I do is I take it right there. You know, those, uh, those uh, uh, prosciutto, they come in, they're very thin like that. You could use Serrano ham, you could use whatever you want. You can put one, or you can even put two. You know, and when I close them, I close them like this, and then I put another slice. You see, I'll show you. And then I go in right there, and I put another slice. So I got a little package in there, and then I put the cheese in there. And you see, 
and you roll it slowly and you got yourself a nice little package then you could have put inside the chicken or inside the pork chop or whatever it is you're stuffing okay it's not complicated friends all right and then uh, uh, what we're gonna do we're gonna go in there and we're gonna cut a pocket in it and if the fat is uh, if the fat is gonna come out anyway on that side you see right there it's loose so I'm just gonna take it out after you brine it for a while it gets loose in there so what we're gonna do we could do it on the on the fat side you know what? That fat is going to come out anyway, so I might as well just remove it now. And, uh, and then what I do is I go in there and just make a little pocket. I'm using a boning knife. Uh, and, and I make just a little pocket, not too much of a hole now. I go in there and just make a little pocket. So the pocket has got to be big enough so I can go in there and, and put my... Uh, my uh, so not too, hollow, not too big of a hole, but enough so... Then I, I, I'll have uh, spaces to put my, uh, my, my um, cheese and my prosciutto in there, you see? So you go in there, you take, and make sure it's cold, make sure you save it cold, friends, eh? You go in there, and you push it in, you see? Push it in. That's all you do. Really, really simple, my friends. You see? Smack it in there. I got salt already in the brine, some friends, so I don't need salt anymore. I'm just gonna put the pepper, black pepper, and, uh, and I'm gonna pan sear them, and we're gonna put some fresh black pepper in there. You see, on both sides, this I'll eat it later. <laughs> I'll eat it later. I'm gonna put that in there, friends. Yeah, here you go, look. There's a fresh black pepper in there, oh yeah. You see? Come over there, you. Let me clean it up here, mamma mia. Oh yeah. Look at this. And then we're going to put some uh, clarified butter in the pan. And then we're going to saute it. Why do I put clarified butter? Because if I put regular butter, it burns. Okay, now I don't mind. Believe me, I use regular. I got two butter. Trust me, I'm ready to go. I don't mind using regular butter. For those of you that follow the channel, you know I don't mind at all, right? Quite a contrary, as a matter of fact. I like to clean my hands every time, friends, and sanitize. So I don't mind uh, um, uh, uh, using uh, regular butter if, uh, if I can burn it a little bit and, uh, and, uh, and uh, cook the milk protein so it's, uh, it's uh, like a burn noisette where the milk protein starts caramelizing a little bit. I don't mind that either. But if you put it in here like this, it'll burn completely by the time the pork chop is ready, you see? So now, uh, another secret, my friends, then it's very important. So I got my temperature. I want it to be 350. Uh, so I get, it, I get a really, really good sear in there, friends, you see? We're gonna put them in here like this. So I leave them right here without touching it, so I get a nice uh, a caramelization, nice uh, 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 Maillard reaction, and get some nice color in here while I clean up. I do my house cleaning here with my sanitized rack. Let's see what we got here, friends. You see, we got some nice little color right there. You see, it looks good. And uh, we're not gonna take them. Now we're gonna let them, we're gonna let them uh, uh, caramelize a little more in the oven and on that side. My fry pan are oven proof up to 450 degrees. I got the oven at 425 degrees, friends. I got them in there and I'm gonna cook them. And the secret, friends, the secret is to make sure we don't overcook the pork chop. Okay, and most of the time people overcook pork chop. A perfectly cooked pork loin or a pork tenderloin is 145 degrees. Okay, those uh, uh, pork chop were boneless. Uh, I want to cook them at 145, 150. I mean, if you have to go to 155, you can go to 155, but don't worry about it. The trichonosis is, is, uh, is something that uh, has been eradicated for many years. Now, I heard that there is trichonosis if you eat bear meat. I don't know why you would want to eat bear meat, but uh, some people do. And, uh, and you can get trichonosis if it's not cooked properly. So uh, don't be eating no bear meat, eh? Um, I think there's a lot of animals out there we can eat besides bear. But hey, for the hunters out there, they got to do whatever they want to do. I, I, I couldn't have even kill anything. I can't kill anything. You know, look, I'm a chef. You would think I can kill anything. No, I cook it, but don't ask me to kill it because I'm not killing it. I am totally anti-killing any animal. 
So, but if it comes in my kitchen and it's dead, I eat it. I mean, I cook it, but I'm not going to kid it, okay? And a bear, <laughs> not a tissue to eat a bear, you get trichinosis. So look, guys, I gotta make a, I'm going to make a mushroom sauce. Now, we already made a, a mushroom sauce recipe. Uh, this is just to, to show you another recipe out there. It's going to be more of a creamy a mushroom sauce, but we have a fabulous mushroom sauce recipe. If you have not seen it, Jack is going to put the link in there for you, and you'll be able to check it out because it's a really wonderful recipe. Okay, this is very simple here. we got shallots. We're going to put um, a little bit of, uh, well, we're going to wait for the garlic. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We're going to put some rosemary in here. i got some chopped rosemary. And uh, you can put some taigo in there. You can put a bunch of stuff in there, a bunch of herbs in there. And then we're going to take the mushrooms and we're going to get rid of the water. So what would help us get rid of the water is a, a mush a salt. And since you're going to use a salt, I might as well use a mushroom salt. I got a mushroom salt, so I'm going to use about a, a good, a good uh, Mediterranean sea salt, uh, uh, kosher salt, whatever you got. It's going to work just fine. The idea is to get rid of the water. The broccolinis. I don't know if you bought broccolini lately. Now, I don't really like the traditional bitter uh, uh, broccolinis, but those guys right there that I bought, friends, they are um, uh, baby broccolinis, you see? And, uh, and let me tell you, they're not bitter at all. They're wonderful. I love them. So what I do is I poach them really quick. In boiling water, you've seen me do this before, right? I poach them in, uh, in boiling water just for a second or two, and then I put them in ice water, all right? So what we're going to do, we're going to make this broccolini really, really quick, friends. I'm going to put my stock over there that I'll use later on. So I'm going to saute the broccolini really quick, okay? In the meantime, the mushrooms are going to be releasing all their water. You'll see in a minute. If you have never seen me make the mushroom sauce, uh, if you haven't seen it, you'll see it. this is how you make a sauce, friends. You build layers on top of each other, okay? It's really, really important. So now, for the broccolini, I'm going to use a, um, I'm using this uh, garlic olive oil. A lot of you have ordered this garlic olive oil, and uh, the comments are amazing. It's, people love it. I absolutely love it. This is roasted garlic olive oil. It's amazing. So all I'm going to do, friends is I'm gonna, again, make sure I'm hot. That's why I like to use my thermometer. So I don't go in there with a cold oil. And we're gonna saute the mushrooms are about to release uh, water. And then we're gonna put a little bit of wine and a little bit of vinegar. And then, uh, and, and, and then a little bit of garlic. And uh, we're gonna make it a nice cream sauce. And the broccolini, I got some red onion in there, friends. I had some red onion that I want. And I'm looking at at least 300, right? I'm gonna saute the red onion. Look, I cut them in very thin. Lately, I've been using a lot of red onion because I find them really interesting, but they don't need to cook that much. It's not like a regular Spanish onion or a white onion. You really, really gotta caramelize. The red onion, you really don't. You know, they grate on salad, they grate on salsa because you don't need to cook them that much. So they're wonderful for something like this that is already cooked just to give it some extra flavor, you see? So it's very simple, right? I mean, and the whole idea is mise en place. You see, I can do all this because I'm ready. Mise en place, put everything in place. All right, look, look at the pan, folks. Look at what's happening in there, friends. You see, the, this is the reduction saucepan. And this is gonna allow me to do some reductions. It's a beautiful pan. This is the demise, a seven ply. And now I am smelling the mushroom as the water as the water evaporates, it intensifies the flavor of the mushroom. Anything with water dilutes. That's what water does. It dilutes flavor. When you get rid of the water, ooh, you intensify. So now all of a sudden you can start to smell it. And it's quite amazing, you see? And right there, we're looking good. And I'm, see, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a, 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 a browning in the back. Of, I like it. I like it. I'm going to use all that foam found uh, to deglaze this and I'm gonna make a nice sauce with it okay so the onion are looking good the um, broccolini can go in there we're just gonna saute them real quick at the last minute you know what we'll do friends at the last minute we'll just I'm gonna reduce them at the last minute I put a little bit of garlic in here a little bit of the olive oil in there and that's all there is to it 
very simple. Okay, let's look at this right there. You see? You see right there? Look, I'm going to show you. This is what I'm looking for right here, folks. You see it right there? That caramelization right there, that fund, is really, really precious. So I'm going to put a little bit of garlic. Because now I'm ready. I'm a little bit of garlic. And I'll use some of that later. I hope I don't forget. Um, uh, you see the garlic, my friends? The garlic, you cook it only until you can smell it. You see, the mushroom have released most of their water. In a second, we're going to smell the garlic. Oh, I'm smelling it. I'm smelling the garlic. I'm going to put a little bit of wine. This is a, a Shiraz. So it's a big, heavy-duty red wine. You can use a Cabernet Sauvignon. But whatever wine you use, friends, use a wine you're willing to drink. Okay? If you're not willing to drink it, don't put it in there. It's not going to get any better. You know, you're putting a wine. Oh, I'm just going to put in a cooking. I don't like it. Do you think it gets better if you cook it 15 minutes? No, it does not. If you don't like the wine, don't put it in the food. It don't get any better, I promise you. It's still going to be bad. So now you're making a sauce with bad wine. You don't want to do that. All right? So look at it. Look at those broccoli. They look beautiful. All right, so look. Reduce the wine by half. You know, I'm, I'm not really sure it is by half right now. But uh, we got to check. You know what I want to do? I want to check on those uh, pork chops. I may want to flip them on the other side, friends. So let me check them. Let me see how they're doing. You know, while the wine is reducing, I'm going to check them. I'm going to put them in here. I'm going to see. I may have to flip them on the other side. You see, let me see what I got. Yes, yes. I'm glad I flipped them. You see, we got a little leak in there. See, now they go. we're going to go in there on the other side. And then by the time I'm done with the sauce, my chops will be ready. Okay, so look. Reduce right here. We good? A little bit of balsamic vinegar. Now, I'm using my balsamic vinegar because it's an 18-year-old balsamic vinegar. It's a sweet vinegar. If you don't have one of those, don't put a regular balsamic vinegar. It's going to be too acid, okay? This is just to give us a little thickness. Then we're going to put the stock. And I got the beef stock in here. Just a little bit of stock. You see? And then we're going to put a touch of cream, friends. And we have ourselves a sauce. Salt, salt, pepper. Let me put some salt in the broccolini before I forget, because I know I'm going to forget. A little black pepper. And this is going to be good. I'm going to turn the heat off. Let's look at this sauce here, friends. Now, for those of you that have followed my, uh, my video about the roux, remember I told you I was going to use it. So let me get a whisk in here, friends. And uh, the roux that I made in my kitchen, I said, you guys got to make this. So here it is. This is the roux that uh, then, uh, we made in, uh, in that video. If you, if you haven't seen that video about a roux, it's wonderful. It's a roux that has been cooked already, you see? This is a blown roux that has been cooked already in the oven, and it smells like cookie dough. And it's cooked, so you can you you can thicken the sauce now with roux. You can thicken it with uh, cold starch, arrowroot, tapioca powder, flour, whatever it is you want to do. But if you have a roux, you put a little roux in there, and you let it go in there. Remember, this is already cooked, so roux is what flour and water, right? Well, you don't need to worry about this guy cooking because it's already cooked. So we're going to let it thicken a little bit, and then we'll, we'll adjust to the right consistency in a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to take the pork chops out, because I don't want them to be overcooked, friends. All right? So here we have it. We're going to check the temperature of it. we we'll check the temperature. We want to be in the center at uh, 145, 150 at the most. So let me see what I got here, friends. All right. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to leave them in a few more minutes, and then we're going to go back in the oven. Just a few more minutes. In the meantime, let's put just a little bit more roux. You see, that's the beautiful thing about having it this way. If you don't have a cooked roux, you can add flour like I have had it many times, or tapioca powder or cornstarch. We're going to put a little bit of cream. And right there, my friends, the last ingredient I'm going to put in, I'm going to fix, fix consistency. It needs a little bit more, but I'm going to wait. I want to make sure the roux has time to work. And we're going to add some uh, uh, grape poupon mustard with a seed in it. See? Grape poupon mustard with a seed. 
And that's going to give us an amazing little texture right here. See, look at this mustard, friends. Look how beautiful that is. You see? Crepe bone mustard with a seed. It's called a demo mustard, the country mustard. You see? And here's that sauce, my friend. And that sauce is looking beautiful. It needs to be a little, little thicker. So I'm going to make it just a touch thicker. And I'm going to put some chopped parsley. I got this beautiful chopped parsley. And then I'm going to thicken it just a little bit more. And I think we are good to go, friends. There we go. That's it. All right, let me move everything. I'm going to need some dinner plates because I forgot them. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, friends. Let me clean up everything. It's going to take me two minutes. Let me clean up a little bit because the pork chop can stay two seconds. I'm going to get some dinner plate. I'll be back in two minutes. Okay, friends, we'll just um, uh, check out the consistency of the sauce. And uh, always make sure, by the way, you take when you take a fry pan out of the oven. <laughs> Put this on there, friends. Let's check out the sauce. It's, it's beautiful. Oh, wow. It's got a great flavor, friends. Great flavor. I'm going to put just a touch more cream, just a little bit. And then, of course, we're going to finish it up with butter. <laughs> it wouldn't be the same thing if we didn't finish it up with butter. So what I like to do when I put butter in there, turn it off, turn the heat off, and incorporate my butter. And right there, my friend, you have yourself a beautiful mushroom sauce that you can serve with chicken, with beef, with pork, with anything. And it's a, a quick, quick, quick little sauce. Let's make a plate. We're going to take the broccolini. We're going to put it underneath. You see? We're going to put it underneath, and we're going to try to make it uh, a little uh, clean, clean plate. Where I forgot to take this out. We're going to put our broccolini in there, friends. You see? And uh, hey, you come back in the middle, eh? Gonna put a broccolini in there, friends. I don't want to stay in the middle. I need my two hands. That's what I need. There you go. Come back over here, you. There you go. Get in there. So it looks pretty, you know. Maybe we don't have to slap it on the plate, and we don't have to be too fancy either. But it's nice if we just do this, right, friends? And voila. And this is it. And a couple of red onion. And uh, and voila. All right. Well, there's plenty for two here, friends. Right there, right? And uh, oh, let me put that back in there. Let me get a towel. Let me get a the pork chop right there. There you go. Let's put this one right in there, just like this, friends. Let's take the vegetables out. Put it right in there, friends. There we go. Let's take this out of there. Right there. Let's clean this. And we can take our sauce, my friends, and put as much or as little as we wish on top of it. And that's... Uh, there's no, there's no right nor wrong here, my friend. Some people are going to say, oh, that's not enough. Some people are going to say, oh, wait, well, it's a little too much. He can put a right on top of it, just like this, friends. You see? Look at this. Hmm. Yeah, just like this. Is it? Just, just like this. And, uh, and then, you know what? Is it? Rosemary is a spice in there, right? Rosemary is a spice. Now, of course, you can put the sauce underneath. Uh, rosemary is the flavor of the day. And you can put yourself a little uh, uh, rosemary sprig in here. And you have yourself a beautiful pork chop, my friends. You see, pretty simple, right? I mean, simple. It's simple. You know what? I got this other pork chop right there. So why don't I just cut it in half? And uh, and then we can look at it together on the inside, my friends, okay? Whew, this is a little hot. Here you go. Let's look at this pork chop together, friends. You see right there? Look at this. This is beautiful. You see? It's cooked to perfection. You can see the pork is beautiful, nice and moist, friends. Uh, and this is what we're looking for at the end. And the, the, the cheese is, is confined in there perfectly well because the prosciutto are protected in there. You see, look at this. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous, my friends. And, uh, and, and voila. Look at this. Huh? 
어. 음. 음. Delicious, my friend. I hope you make this recipe. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, friend, when it's a subscriber. And by all means, ring that bell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next couple of days with another fantastic video.